Toy fans. Welcome to the Toy Lines podcast. For those of you coming back to listen to our newest episode, thanks. And to those of you who are joining the show for the first time, we hope you like it. And if you do, give our other episodes a listen. With me, as always, is my good friend, my Toy Line sidekick, or perhaps I'm the sidekick, and the most humble guy in the toy world next to Santa Claus, Tom Romero. How are you doing, Tommy? Hi, everybody. Uh, to our listeners, I just want to apologize for the hum of the air condition. It is 96 here, 96 degrees out in the East Coast with a heat index of 100. And if I didn't have it on, I would melt like a Crayola crayon on the sidewalk. So I apologize. Um, And I apologize to Tommy, who's going to have to try to do his best with the audio on this later on. It's a hot one out there. It's a scorcher today. Well, Ian, have you heard about The Last Ronin? The Teenage Uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles' Last Ronin. I know you've discussed it. You've brought it up before, um, and I know that you're looking forward to it. So, Well, it's coming out next month, and there's a lot of rumors circling around about many, who the last turtle actually is. I'm sorry. How many episodes are there? Uh, I'm sorry. How many issues are there? I believe it's six issues, but it'll be bi-monthly from, I was gonna, okay. from what I'm told. Each issue will be $8.99. It'll be prestige format from IDW. The toys that made us brought Eastman and Laird back together. So they were discussing it, and I guess one of them found this lost script or outline because they always want to do like a dark. According to Eastman, he wanted to do a dark or his take of Batman Dark Knight Returns, but with the turtles. Was that to be a cartoon, or was it supposed to be a comic? It was, it was always a comic. Okay. From what I understand, it was always supposed to be a comic. Like, they wanted to do this back in 87. Wow. Yeah. They wanted to do it back in 87, and it was set in the year 2017. Mm-hmm. The future back then. Yeah. Boy, were they wrong about a lot of things. Yeah. You know, about who the mysterious turtle is. And right now, Michelangelo is in the lead. Okay. Now, here's my theory. From listening to interviews with writer Tom Waltz and Kevin Eastman, it's loosely based on an episode of the 2003 cartoon episode, Same As It Never Was, where Donatello was the last surviving turtle. Not to cut you off, but now. It was called Sam as it never was. Correct. Right. Which is funny because I think of that 80s song where it's like, Sam as it never was. You know that song from uh, Talking Heads, I think it was? Yes. Is it Days? Uh, yeah. So ba- I'm sorry. Back to your. So mm-hmm. the cartoon did sort of an episode like this is what you're saying? Correct. And then a few years ago, Peter Laird came out with, an, with a comic called Plastron Cafe. Now okay. in it, in the story... There's an aged Donatello, an elderly Donatello, reminiscing about life and loss. And he's sitting in his house in a, in a field, and he just starts bawling. He's crying mm-hmm. about everything he's lost. And that's how, that's how the, the short story ends. So, so I'm thinking, I, I have a strong opinion that the last Ronin turtle is Donatello. So this Plastron Cafe, is that the publisher or is that the name of the title no it was a mirage that was oh. a strong cafe was so this the name is of the before book. he sold this is before he sold turtles way before this is when uh they were still doing mirage okay now the interesting interesting thing to me about this title the last ronin is that and i look i know more about norse mythology than japanese stuff and samurais but a ronin is a samurai not a ninja so i i kind of wonder why they chose that title you know it's interesting um may have something to do with the book perhaps um if donatello is the last one i i I, it'd be interesting to see how the others left or you know died or whatever you know blaze of glory or sickness or you know whatever Mm -hmm. um and I, I also think, like, will this comic be a tearjerker for for Turtle fans? I mean, it very well could be. 
I would be happy to see if Donatello was the last Ronin. That's who you want it to be? I, I'd like it to be, yeah. Is he your favorite? No, I'm more of a Leonardo type guy. The leader? Yeah. Stout Harder, Stout Harder Warrior. Yeah, but uh, Donatello is my second favorite. If I, yeah. you know, if I had to put him in order. Donnie's cool. I mean, Corey Feldman voiced him. Um, oh, that's right, yeah. I was always a Michelangelo fan. Um... As I got older, I think I there I like I, I liked I like Leo. I like Donnie. Um, the one thing I always liked about the movies and just getting into from cartoon to movie, like I always liked how the voices just even though there were different actors throughout the um, from the beginning up until present day, with the exception of Corey Feldman as Donatello, the the voices kind of sounded the same. Where you you were like, you would have to like look it up, but they they always had the, almost like the same sound, to, you know. So it wasn't it didn't distract you and take you out of getting into it. And I always thought that was cool. I always also thought it was cool, well weird, for the first movie that the voice of Michelangelo was cousin Oliver from the Brady Bunch. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Now, if you look up, folks on YouTube, um, there's this short film about Casey Jones. Uh, this guy made and it is the most incredible short film I have ever seen. The guy playing Casey Jones looks a lot like Eli, um, Elias Cochas or however you pronounce the actor's name. Cody. Ma- Thank you. They made a turtle suit for Michelangelo and I even got Mikey's voice back from the first movie. Um, but this is an incredible short film centered on Casey. And when we interviewed him for uh, toylines.com, he actually explained a lot about the making of the movie, a lot about what went in to do this fan film. Um, and I don't really like to call it fan film because it's not just like, you know, a cheesy looking thing. It's, it's a very well done production. It's more like an independent film. And uh, I mean, they made their own turtle suit. I mean, he did, this guy did his own stunts. It's uh, And they, they took things from the books, references to Casey Jones and, the comics and stuff like that and edit it in. So any turtle fan who wants to see something really cool, um, just type in like probably Casey Jones fan film or something like that. And you're going to be really surprised at what you see. It's, it's an incredible piece of work. So I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking yeah, I'd put money on it. That it's going to be done to tell Although since th- there's so many references to it being done, tell there, there's all well, the reason more not to have it be him. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't, I don't want this to get spoiled because um. Uh, well, do you, you know, remember? Do you remember Armageddon 2001 from DC? It was a big annual crossover. Uh-huh. So there was this one overarching villain, the Monarch, uh-huh. and apparently he was one. Once upon a time, he was a superhero, but he just turned evil to save the what he thought was. You know, his world. Selfish. Originally, DC Comics said it was it was a giant surprise at the end. Originally, it was going to be Captain Adam. Okay. Comics Buyer Guide, if I'm remembering this correctly. Comics Buyer Guide found out about it, spoiled it, and right at the last minute, they made it uh, Hawk from Hawk and Dove. Really? As the monarch, yeah. So I really hope I'm not ruining anything. Uh, I mean, oh. if you look at uh, Kevin Eastman's layouts and pencil drawings for this Ronin turtle, this would make an excellent action figure. I'm so for all you customizers out there, get to work because I'm willing to pay. <laughs> I mean, it, he's he's got a hood. He's got all the turtle weapons. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah, this he's a badass turtle. But and that's interesting because like just for the record, we'll say it's not Donnie, right? And it could say it's Michelangelo, who's the most kind of yeah, like the, the kind-hearted one. Yeah, like he's very kind-hearted and uh, the you know the party dude. If you go back by the original cartoon, but if it was Michelangelo and you see him with all these weapons and he turns into this like. Not that he was never a good warrior, but, you know, like, if he got so uh, 
just angered and, and, and toughened by something that happened to his family. That would be an, really any character. It's going to be a shock. Any of the four, unless it's like a girl turtle. You want to know something? I don't think if they made it Raphael, it's too obvious. You think? Yeah, not not too obvious, but he was already angry. Right. But then again, that's that's what could be the thing because like you could automatically think, oh, it's not going to be him because of this reason. And then they could lead you on a this goose chase, you know, where it's like clues are are set up that to purposely confuse you and lead you back to like, oh my gosh, it was him. So really, it's it, it, it's anybody's guess right now, which is kind of cool, um, mm. you know, not knowing. Uh, it's it should be an interesting thing. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I, I don't know if you knew, and but... and you know what, with the IDW twist, because the IDW series uh, apparently it was a bunch of uh, warriors whose spirits got into the turtles. That's how they became the Ninja Turtles. Is that yeah, in, in the IDW issue one. Okay, so. It'd be interesting. And here's a whacked out, just crazy theory. What happens if it's all four? What happens if it's all four? All four spirits are in that one body. Oh, that's actually pretty, that's pretty cool. That's a good guess, too. That's a good theory. Turtle trivia. Um, did you know that they actually once appeared at Disney's MGM Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Studios? Yeah, so obviously this is back before Nickelodeon got involved. Back in 1990, they were in the... This is when Hollywood Studios was called uh, Disney MGM Studios. And they would come out, they would do um, some martial arts stuff, and then you could meet them and, and get a, an autograph. Um, it's on YouTube if for anybody who wants to see it. I don't know how long it lasted. I, I never. I don't think I saw it myself. It's interesting to know that the turtles are there and... Like I, I've mentioned this to you before, Tommy. I've always felt that the Turtles is like the little comic book that could, that they've always seemed to just like survive anything, uh, wh whether it's a, a new comic or a new cartoon or a, a new version of the movie. It's it's pretty interesting how they um have always just kind of like you know stuck it out and lasted so long. What do you think about? Back in the day, I don't know if they still do this today, but remember when we were kids, they would have like mail away figures. Where you would send the proofs of purchase. Yeah, those were Just, fun. Do you like those? So I was. I mean, it, it was it essentially depended, right? it, it's it's what we're doing now, except yes. we don't have to collect uh, UPC symbols yeah. or or points or you know cereal box labels or anything like that. Now, what's interesting when you really think about it is when Star Wars first came out um, in, the, in May of 77, Kenner couldn't get the toys out by Christmas. But they, people wanted them. So they sold basically an empty box, which is like the early bird kit. You would pay for the box. You would get a, a, like a mail-away certificate and some stickers. And then in the mail you get four figures, which was, it was kind of a weird setup for, for which one did you get first too? It was Chewbacca, Luke, Leia, and R2-D2. Um, and this kind of, it was like really the first mail away figure in a way, when you think about it. Uh, but of course, through the years, Star Wars has had a, a bunch. Um, most, let's say the one of the most popular would be the controversial rocket firing Boba Fett, which came without a rocket firing backpack the emperor was anakin um admiral akbar one of the things i find really interesting um between 78 and 79 snaggletooth came out twice and one in 78 it was a tall figure in blue in 79 it was short meaning like half the size of a regular figure in a red outfit they also came with the Sears ver Sears release of the Cantina, I believe. But there was kind of like two Snaggletooths. And, and as a kid, it was always like, well, which one's the real one? You know, but it, they're pretty cool. Um, Willow had one. Uh, Nestle, uh, Nestle Candies, I guess, released one. 
um, superpowers, of course, had Clark Kent. But they also had, um, you know, Steppenwolf, that character? Yeah, he was in the yeah. uh, Justice League movie. He was the villain. Oh, was he? All right. And I'm not talking about that crappy band either, Steppenwolf, with that stupid song. Um, G.I. Joe did it, you know, um, the first ever, which is funny since we just discussed this, was the uh, Silver Masked Cobra Commander. Commander, mm-hmm. sorry, that was very New Jersey. Um, Major Blood came this way. Actually, what's interesting about Major Blood was that while people could, um, they knew about the Cobra Commander, they could send away for it. The people who got Major Blood were the people who signed, who mailed the way for Cobra Commander, meaning their names were on a list, and then they sent something out to those individuals. Uh, Hooded Cobra Commander, of course, Sergeant Slaughter. I don't know if you remember uh, William the Refrigerator Perry, mm-hmm. the football player. It's kind of oh, cool, that's... right. Remember that? Yeah, but, he was a mail away. Right, and, that, and and kind of think about this. Like you're just some. Uh, he's a football player, but like you're a dude, and you get to be your own GI Joe figure. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I remember a few years ago, uh, a few years ago, back in '84, uh, uh, GI Joe ran something where they would they would give you like a generic figure but they would personalize your card Mm -hmm. and bio so it would reflect your name so essentially you were a gi joe character that's kind of cool yeah Uh, yeah that was uh, that was fun i don't remember that but i would have dug that when i was a kid yeah Uh, and then um i mean a lot of toy companies have done it um thundercats did it with it was a mumra figure but it was mumra inside the tomb okay so the mummy version of mumra I remember that one. Uh, GoBots had one. It was a renegade villain called Creepy. It was cre- creepy. Yeah, stuff. it was basically a Insecticon for GoBots. And, and the worst name for a character. <laughs> and then, obvious, it's not been confirmed, but technically, Wonder Bread He Man. That's what I wanted to ask figure. you about. Uh, so, what I looked up um, when I was doing some research on this was the Wonder Bread. It was called Savage Wondar He-Man, and it was W-U-N-D-A-R. Can you tell me about that? I think the name Wondar came later on. Okay. I think it was a fan. Either Scott Knightlick made it or, you know, some, you know, it was one of those internet names that just came about. But kind of stuck to it. Like, yeah. Somebody he was always the Wonder Bread figure. That's right. Like he that. was always the Savage He-Man from Wonder Bread. He's basically He Man with Zodak. Well, they didn't even know if the Zodak armor actually came with the figure. He had a brown sword from the Castle Grey Skull weapons. Okay. He had brown hair, brown boots, black belt, and bare chested. So this is actual. Th- I th- I didn't know if this was real or not when I saw it. So I wanted to ask you that. Um, it's a big mystery because no one can prove it apparently mattel did something with the munchie cheese okay i remember those stupid things yeah yeah My sister had them yeah so apparently you could if you saved up your points or whatever you had three options i can't remember the third option but it was either a he-man figure a munchie cheese and another figure door number three right but no one can prove it so wait like this toy exists. Does he man wonder bread? Like he was sent it out. Does. I mean, people, I mean, there's a whole bunch of rumors. Some people do you, say, do you have one? W- I have the classics one. I don't, I don't have a, an original one. Oh, so they, they did a reissue, like a, um, a, a newer one later. Right. On. Okay. He was the, the first year of classics. He was the subscription figure. Okay. So whenever you would subscribe to, classics for that year you'd get a bonus figure that year so okay. you'd get the regular 12 or monthly figure and then the bonus figure would come okay. the first bonus figure was one dar so you but you never had the original one no do you know of anybody who does i don't one year i was at PowerCon. some guy was selling one for 500 dollars. but what? you couldn't tell if it was authentic or not Is who knows thing? yeah who knows that's actually an interesting thing if anybody... I mean, there there's a ton of theories on Wondar. Um, some say he was a prototype Hey, I wonder what they are. <laughs> Sorry. 
uh really for for like a conan figure they were going to release well mattel originally got the license for conan okay and they realized it was an r-rated movie so apparently so what right. are we gonna do now <laughs> right i mean like i said there's a there's a million rumors so one of them was mattel it was mattel's version of conan another rumor was they were giving them away at, at christmas to all the employees that's kind of cool for some reason yeah so yeah you're not getting a bonus but you're getting a free toy yeah right uh so any fans out there who have some info on this please write in if you do because inquiring minds want to know this is very interesting is there a lot of he-man mysteries like this or is this really the only one no this is pretty much the only one like this is something i didn't know until looking up this subject and i was like what is this and i was like i gotta talk to you and i never got to ask you beforehand so it's um all somewhat live as we discuss um and it is pretty cool actually now maybe they just never sent it out there's another one you know like like whereas like the rocket firing boba fett was built but before they sent it out they took out the mechanism so it wouldn't fire you know you would go to a convention and people would say they had this was the one and of course it didn't come out that way so it's kind of like sort of falls in that category in a way yeah, but what would be the purpose for a brown-haired He-Man? Money. Uh, I don't. I don't really know. Um, I mean, the nice thing about it is when he entered classics, he was a completely, complete wholesome character. You know, he had his own bio, he had his own name. You know, but it's also was... like, why give him a brown sword too? I mean, like, the, well, why give him the same well, type it wasn't, of power it, sword? See, that's. Yeah, that's where I need to correct you. It's not a power sword. but th- So it doesn't look like one? No, or... it's one of those generic... Yeah, it's a it's a short sword that came with Castle Gray- with the vintage Castle Grayskull. Okay. Okay. So it's... Oh, okay. So that's even more of a mystery. I really don't know. Yeah. I wonder how they sent it out. Just like in a box or a bag or... Uh, some people say bag. Some people say box. Like a white box. He never, was... he never, just a regular brown box. He, he was never a carded figure. Okay. That's interesting. Until. Until the classics. The classics. Okay. Right. The sword that he came with, is that. That's a power sword in that's the classics. A power sword. Line. Yeah. Okay. So they kind of. The re- nice thing, the nice thing about the classics line was they were trying to make it one cohesive uh, story. You know, one sword. Although. I mean, you can make the argument that New Adventures He Man came with his own laser sword, but so, so then his sword there is that equal to He Man or Skeletor's? For yes. Pl- oh, so there's three swords then, in a way. I'm not following. Well, it, remember? Well, there's He-Man. two halves of the power sword, right? And He Man and Skeletor had one, and they right. were combined. Right, and then so, the thing with classics is, each different He Man had like a different colored sword. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, it's, so it's, okay, okay. So Tom, you know, one of the things about toys is that there's various things that you can collect, whether it's action figures, uh, Matchbox, Legos. I mean, toys go in so many directions. Board games is another one. What do you think of board games? I loved them growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was one of the rare occasions my f- whole family would get together. Yeah, I always fell asleep during them. Really? I got bored. Wow. Well, That's a bad Maybe joke. you weren't playing the right game. Yeah, it was just a lame attempt at humor, folks. <laughs> um, board games are cool, though, especially today where so many people are obsessed with their phone. If you can put the phone down and you get together, like you said, you know, get together as a family and i didn't realize this there's so many versions like especially monopoly you played monopoly right yeah and then star like star wars 10 different ver- versions maybe, maybe 10 million because like what i <laughs> star wars well, monopoly, it's, it's basically the same game just yeah yeah personalized almost so like you can play your monopoly transformers or your monopoly right. barbie or right like when Star Wars came out, I remember it was like the coolest thing. And then they did a Disney one. 
And I was like, that's the coolest thing. But uh, apparently there's a Goonies version coming out um, based off the movie. There's a Beetlejuice one based off that movie. And in, in this, the, the tokens are like a, um, a wedding dress, a handbook for the recently deceased, a skeleton key, Beetlejuice's tombstone, Lydia's camera, and Charles Dietz's binoculars. Um, instead, of the houses are renamed haunted houses, and the hotels are paranormal museums. So they kind of themed it you know, to the movie. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas has one. Um, Stephen King's movie It has a version of Monopoly and Clue. Um, Golden Girls, the show from the 80s. Wait, go back to the um, It. It? Uh, so the movie version of It? You know, the Stephen King movie with Pennywise? Right. So does There's the clown, a... like, terrorize you throughout the whole game, or...? Uh, I don't know. I, I've never played it. I just saw on um, the site. That'd be interesting if he was like a little cuter figure. Be like, oh, I want to be yeah. the clown. Everybody'd be fighting for that one, right? Yeah, she should have like a red balloon. Um, so there the, probably he, is something like that. There probably, yeah. I, I want to be the balloon. Severed arm for Georgie. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the Golden Girls from the '80s as a game of Monopoly and a game of Clue. Um, I don't know what the Clue version is is like. What, what, I forget their names in that show. I'm not a Golden Girl. The Golden fan. Girls. Yeah. We got yeah, Blanche. Blanche. The 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 mother. The mother. There's I remember Betty. Blanche. Right. Blanche. Betty White. It's so weird. I know their real names. I don't you know had the character one, names. The old lady. He like always slept around. Which is yeah, right. Blanche. Oh, that was Blanche. Okay. Yeah. And that was like really weird. Yeah. Like, just um, it's not like your grandma's doing that. It's just a lot. Well, Blanche, she was, I mean, I think Betty White was the youngest one out of all of them, but, right, but Blanche, they, they, Blanche looked younger than all of them. Yeah, and, and the, the grandmother, or the mother of um, B. Arthur, they had to make her with makeup to make her look older. Yeah. But uh, what was B. Arthur's character's name? I, I just remember her, her mom calling her Pussycat. And my sister would know because she loves this show. Um it's a great show. I, I used to watch it. I, didn't know. I I remember when it was on, but like it's so popular now. Oh it's yeah, it's just it's come back like like a land of the living dead. It's like these old women are just back. They're on every day. They're on games, playing cards, t shirts. It's like eighties nostalgia. It's, it's so crazy. Yeah, um, everything's coming back, which is another topic we we need to talk about one day. About definitely. Where's um, all the new stuff? You know. I don't know, man, but a few other things that came out. Um, a Candyland based off Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The Gene Wilder version. Kind of a good version. Yeah, Gene Wilder. He was so great in that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, and then this is kind of interesting. They made a, uh, for Clue, a Twilight Zone Tower of Terror uh, game based off the Disney theme park ride, which only exists well in some of the parts it's still in florida but california's it, it's being changed into guardians of the galaxy um and then they made a game of the, remember the game of life i love that game theory you could be a winner at the game of life mm -hmm. they uh made a haunted mansion version of that game which i really think should be called the game of the afterlife because you're talking about like ghosts and shit so right but how how does it work though i have no idea I, I just saw that and I was like, like, do you get dead kids? Or, I, like, I never you know, played the game of life like, mortgage. Not, I can't even make my own life work well. So like, I, I can't win out of a freaking board game, but uh, I don't know. Like you would spin a dial on that. Right. Way, and you have right, a car. I get that. Right. I'm just actually, I don't. Really and then you would, life. you would get married, get a career, go to college. I mean, it, get high blood pressure. And uh, That'd be a good card. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know much about them. I know that they're um, they're out. Um, it's like U.S. Can... US uh, USAopoly, I think, hmm. makes a lot of these games. So hmm. if anybody is interested in finding these or other ones, because I I didn't name every single game, 
You know what I saw the other day? I thought it was a great idea. The guy should be a millionaire who came up with this concept. You remember Operation? Yeah. Okay. They made a dog version of it. Really? Yeah, you could be a vet, and you would just remove, you know, pieces of the dog that are making it sick. And then same thing, you hit a side, and the dog, you know, whelps or makes a noise. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I saw it recently in Walmart. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. I think they should make like a, a creepy clown version. Oh, that like that would be cool. Like you just like this really creepy ass clown. Uh, this creepy clown, sorry. And like you know, whenever you touch it, it is no and he, and he does like this hysterical laughter. But why would you want to save the creepy clown? I don't know, but like why not? Because pe- people are so afraid of clowns that um. That's what I'm saying. Why would you want to save it? There should that's be a good a, point. Maybe you put the things in the clown. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to kill the clown. Stop so you're the clown. Trying to, you're trying to poison the, him. Well, you got to take out his funny bone. That's the only thing you do. Okay. But then again, a killer clown isn't funny. Um, you know, maybe the original 80s movie his, was. His scary bone? Take out a scary bone. Take out bone. a scare bone. Yes. Yes. Um, this is a game that we can make a lot of money on. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's just, I don't know. It's just strange, strange, strange. So a veterinarian. I wonder if they would ever make one for like other animals. That would be- yeah, I was curious if there was like a cat version or Gold save fish. a bird. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like maybe the bird comes in a box. It's a worm. It chokes it's a worm. Yeah. I don't know. What was that old nursery rhyme about like the horse or the cow ate the cat or something? Remember that nursery rhyme where like Oh my god, we're going back to kindergarten. We're, we're going back here, but like there was a nursery rhyme about a, I think a fly or something. There was all these different animals that ate each other, and like that should be the game where it's like every time you you pass a level, you get to the next animal, you got to like, somehow save. I don't know. This is really stupid. That should be the game of life. That is, yeah. Like here, here you go, kids. Eat a dog eat dog. I think at the game of life, we should really start out where you're in debt. And you, you just have to try to get out of it. That's how you win at the game of life, getting the hell out of debt. Um, and, uh, you know. Well, I know. I think you can win the lottery. There's oh, a card really? for Yeah, there's a card for that. I, I don't think I ever owned it, but I remember seeing it. I, I, I do remember this cool game, though, uh, Fireball Island. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah it was, was so I think cool. it kind of reminds Wasn't it like Mousetrap? No, mousetrap. You you had to set up all these intricate. Yeah, details. and then like once you try to catch the mouse, you got to set it up again. Yeah. And by then you're like, forget this. But um, on a on Fireball Island, there's this giant board with like a mountain and stuff, and it was like a volcano, and you would have to try to like I think get to the top of the volcano, and um, you know if you were if you were in a certain spot, there was these uh. Like a like a groove where the ball would come down and it would knock your player off. Um, so I remember we used, my neighbor had that. We used to play that game, and his brother had this cool game called um, the Dark Tower, which I think, and I'm 99% sure I'm right on this, that um, Orson Welles did the commercial for. It. And the Dark Tower was just that. It was this big dark tower, and it was electronic, and you would have to get to the top or something but since this was his brother's game we had to like play it in secret because you know you, you can't play it with your other brother's toys and it was just like the the trail those commercials are on um on youtube but those are some cool 80 games 1980s games when we were a kid that are uh, looking back on it's like man they were cool and i want you to listen to this song this girl's incredible she does these amazing songs on cello, so. Uh, okay.
incredible was that? She that did was, every piece herself. That was in, that was the coolest thing because, and she's got a whole bunch of them too. She's got Knight Rider. She has, she does a Star Trek or um, a Star Wars one. Yeah, and you know what's cool is that yeah that she did so the it was, that was the Master of the Universe was the eight cellos, so she yeah. had to play the song each piece eight times, and then somehow lay the track down over it, which is actually what they did with one of the things for Harry Potter, um, in one of the movies to make the the uh, the orchestra to I think a Quidditch match sound louder, so they had to like lay the track over and over and over. But this is just one person, and yeah. Song one talented song. person very talented the song is incredible the way she did it it, it, it it's like it yeah her, think... her name is samara ginsburg and she has her own uh, youtube channel and it's like it, it makes you think of the, of the actual song and you hear it plain as day it, there's no denying this is the he-man theme song but also it's like it's beautiful because it's like um like a almost like a classical piece of music and it just has this quality to it that it elevates it somehow it, it really does and then yeah. there's not that there was anything wrong with the theme song to begin with it just it's just like this whole nother level and like it, i don't even know how long that would take you to do but just watching her play the cello was also interesting on on how the notes work because i i'm not a musician at all uh, i can't play the spoons so um to see her do that, it's just like, good lord, what a talented lady! I mean, she, mm -hmm. she that was that was that was great. Um, uh, you know, well done. Yeah. Again, her name was Samara Gingsburg, and she has her own YouTube channel. So Definitely check that check out. out. Yeah. Um, the Night Rider is uh, pretty cool too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially with the leather jacket. Totally Michael Knight there, but very talented lady. Um, you know, she deserves all the credit, uh, all the um, accolades. Accolades, thank you. I need, I need a source. Um, yes, very, very talented. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I love finding stuff like that on the internet um, where they do things like that. Uh, and it's just like, wow. It just makes you look at it and appreciate it in a different way. And you're like, this, this is like incredible. And like, I would love to have that on a CD. Like, I don't know if people still buy CDs, but like, you know, to actually have that piece of music to listen. I mean, you could always listen to it on YouTube, whatever you want, but right. It's just incredible. But I'm sure with like copyrights and yeah, yeah, of course. But it's, um, somebody wants to get paid. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. talented, really talented though. And then did you see Hasbro's releasing the retro GI Joe line, the three and three fourth figures? So that would be the ones from when we were kids. Yep. It's coming back. I'm telling you, it's all cyclical. So are they re-releasing re the same figures or are they releasing new figures in that style or are they releasing same new... figures, same figures, same figures. So oh, that's... and vehicles, which is nice. Wow. Not yeah. Here. They just showed the Cobra Hiss tank. Cobra Hiss. Yeah. So they're going to have the Hydro. Was it the Hydro? No, the Hydroplane. Which one? The Hovercraft was the G.I. Joe's. The Joes had the hovercraft, and what did uh, Cobra have? The uh, hydro, hydrofoil. I think it was called the hydrofoil. It was like a red thing with these. Like, I'm getting it for Christmas one year. Hmm. Man, maybe they put, maybe they put the USS flag out. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Wow. That a second chance? Could you imagine? It's gonna be a lot more pricier than 109 dollars. Oh, much more. But uh, I remember the Cobra Rattler. You know what though? Would something like that work at retail, you think? Because you figure inflation, I mean, it's, it's got to be easy, an easy 300. Three, oh, wow, 300 is a lot of money, though. I was going to say 300, for that size, it's still, like, a good deal. Because it's seven feet, unless they were going to shorten it, which... Six feet. It was six feet? Okay. Yeah. So, um, but even so, like, if they shortened it to make it more affordable, I don't know if that takes away from it. But, like, you know. That's a good point. For a toy from the 80s to be that giant, like six feet tall, who the hell thought of having a six feet long toy? Like, I can never 
imagine that in my life. And it's, it would be cool if they brought it back. Uh, I'm still thinking it's going to be a HasLab. Yeah. Yeah. It would be cool to see these, um, these toys from our youth of the Joes, um, on pegs and a target or something though. Like the, the actual, like I remember getting spirit and, uh, and the bird, um, who's a native American character and he had the, uh, the Eagle with him. Mm -hmm. And, um, everybody wanted to get snake eyes with the wolf. I remember that, you know, shipwreck came with the bird junkyard and mud. You know, a lot of guys had pets for GI Joe, hmm. but yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Have you checked out the Peacock network? I have not. I am um, universal NBC. Yeah. So I know they got a save by the bell. Right. Re, I don't know if it's a reboot or not. Um, like AC Slater has not aged a bit. No, he looks, he looks like he's still in the eighties. Like, what is he doing? To stay so healthy looking and young. Uh, One of no. the interesting things about the Peacock Network that I found, they have the New Adventures of He-Man and the hard-to-find Eric Larson's Savage Dragon animated show. So, the New Adventures of He-Man, that's... He-Man in space. Okay, He-Man in space. So, they, why do they have it? They just paid, paid the rights for it, or did they make it originally? Well, I know... Universal has the rights to Masters of the Universe. Uh, theatrical stuff, right? No, no, the animated. Oh, you said... All the okay. filmation stuff. Okay. And Mattel only has the toy license? Correct. Well, not license. I, is it, I, I'm not sure if it's a license or if it's an actual right. Okay. So this is the old... This came out, what, after the original He-Man cartoon? 1990, I believe. Okay. That's interesting. I don't because I think Filmation ended in eighty eight, and then New Adventures began in ninety, maybe eighty nine. Did Filmation do the animation for it? No, this was a jet lag production. Was jet lag was um, a French animation studio. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did Inspector Gadget. Nice. Yeah. Computer book. Yeah, was... Jean Jean Chauplan. Oh. Um. If you think back to 89 and you watch Ghostbusters 2, when in the beginning of the movie, when um, Ray and, and Winston go to the party. Yeah. And Who are you going to call? call he -Man? And they all say He-Man. I remember watching the movie and be like, why are they calling He-Man? But maybe the cartoon was out. Maybe like it was just such a weird No, thing. no, it was prior. So that was just like. New Adventures? Yeah, that was just a call back to He-Man. So, but why did they say He-Man in Ghostbusters? That's. That's my point. Like, why He Man? It just was it still well, around? It was at still the time? a popular. Yeah, I mean, okay. it was still a popular toy. Okay. Yeah, they, they, probably they, by then. I, I think most of the figures were were out of retail. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, good line up in the movie. Yeah. And then Savage Dragon. I was surprised to see it there. You can't find it anywhere. I mean, I have a bootleg copy. And it's funny, I was at a convention speaking with Eric Larson. He doesn't even own a copy of the show. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine not owning something. I mean, it, that it wasn't created. that good of a show either. So. Mm -hmm. I think they need a new name because the Peacock channel just sounds stupid. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to call it, but I would search for a new name. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, Channel 4 Plus or I don't know. That'd be a good name, Channel Four Plus. Like, <laughs> no, I'm serious, Channel Four. That that's although I mean it's different sure in each state, you know, but yeah, right, yeah. So they'd have to like fifty different versions or whatever of it. Yeah. But um, so we have some good news for you, Marvel fans. WandaVision will not be delayed until 2021, and will be released in December of 2020, just in time for Christmas on Disney Plus. That's interesting. Yeah. And then this was the show I couldn't wait for. When when the lineup first was announced, that was the show I hands down I cannot wait for. No, I know that's that gonna be a mind trip. This is gonna lead into the Loki show and Thor. Um, not, I'm sorry, th not Doctor Thor, Strange. Doctor Strange. Yeah, the so, multiverse. Yeah, so I'm I'm trying to figure out do you think they appear in it? Or they're just going to be in the after effects of it. 
I, I have like, no idea. I know she's in Doctor Strange from what right. I've read. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the, to Doctor Strange to see the second one because of, I, you know, even though he's in the Infinity movies, I feel like it's, it's about time we get a second Doctor Strange movie because I really enjoyed the first one. So no, we'll get what probably Mandalorian in November and then October, in October. Oh, October, even better. And then this one in two months later. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if they do it right, this should really be a great show. I mean, even from the trailer, you see her her kids. That oh, there's a trailer out now. She morphed. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus, where have I been? Um, I I, I don't know where I've been. I did not know that. Um, did you, have you heard about the rumor of, um, the Lucas edit? I did not. So this is taken with the grain of Tatooine sand. Um, but supposedly with episode nine, when it was being done, that, uh, there were several versions screened. Most of them did not fare well. Lucas did a screening that got the highest ratings that people like the most. Where was the and, screening? Uh, I don't know where. It was probably somewhere out in California. I'm thinking wherever Disney's, well, Burbank maybe, that's where Disney is, or okay. somewhere, or, you know, it could have been anywhere really. Um, but supposedly his version, his edit was better, and it was Kathleen Kennedy who wouldn't release it. She threw it in the, the vault. Um, there's been rumors that with the th disappointment in the Disney trilogy. Um, but personally, I, I, I like them. I don't think they're the best, but I like them. Um, they said that the Lucas one added more depth to it. it I think he filmed, I think it was 15 minutes of footage. and also Lucas had, filmed. Yeah, he had 15 minutes of footage filmed and moved things around. This is all from what I've read, so I I don't know if this is accurate or not. But there were two scenes, two key scenes that um that were would have made things seem better. Um one was Now by on, better, you think it the pacing flowed easier? I or? think it would have made the movie um more it's not the pacing it would have set things up it would have set things up actually for kenobi and it would have set things up for um things about people complaining about that we never actually saw certain characters together so for, for the first point um there's a ru the rumor is after the ship that has chewbacca blows up and ray thinks she killed chewbacca um, she's on the Falcon and she's kind of like talking out loud about it and she hears a voice and the voice turns out to be coming from the force ghost of Anakin Skywalker, um, you know, Hayden Christensen. And then he actually sits there and has a discussion with her about the force. And it was like kind of like a different take about Palpatine. It wasn't whatever that, I don't even know what Palpatine was in, in that movie. He wasn't a clone. He was just old or something. I don't really know what the hell they did. So this is supposed to be something that was going to kind of like tighten, I guess, tighten the plot. And it would also have Anakin have us see Hayden Christensen, which would then kind of like lead into us knowing about him being in Kenobi. Also in a different capacity, of course, but that, that Hayden Christensen, you know, he's still involved in the Star Wars universe. The second scene um, they mentioned is when... After the fight Kylo has with um, with Rey on like the Death Star in the ocean, and Han Solo appears, the theory was is that a scene was filmed where Leia Force projects her image there, and then Luke as a Force ghost appears, and the three of them help Kylo come to the light side of the Force and to make the right decision, and it's because of Leia using this amount of power to project herself there is how she dies in the movie. So that's the rumor. Um, this is what's 
supposedly was filmed that when people the, there were some executives who saw it they were like why wasn't this released because a lot of you know um, shareholders are disappointed in the, the i guess in the amount of money that the movies have been pulling in um this certainly does sound interesting these things um i i, I the scenes aren't on, on youtube as far as i know but i would love to see them it does sound kind of cool what do you think yeah yeah definitely anything from george lucas it would be interesting. definitely a, a step in the right direction yeah it would be interesting too to see him come back and like save his own trilogy uh well, his, his, his franchise his characters um you know i mean that's his legacy it really is you know, i mean um, that and then indie you know like Although I always think of Indy as a Spielberg film, but I mean, he Lucas created him, and um, I mean, Star Wars he's always going to be known for. So, it's pretty, if that's true, it'd be neat to see Lucas kind of stepping in to save the day. Okay, last week I mentioned a rumor, and apparently dreams do come true because it's no longer a rumor. Hayden Christensen will reprise his role as Anakin Skywalker. In the Disney Plus show Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, like whatever they're gonna do, but um, uh, I think it's cool. I I think he got a bum rap from a, from the prequels, and I I like him. I think he's a great actor. I love Jumper was great, and it it'll be cool to see where it goes. Like what what do they do with it? What what is is you know how and all that. It's just will he be Vader? Will he be um will he be what? I don't know. That's I wonder if it opens up a doorway to Ahsoka for Obi Wan. Yeah, because you know she's gonna be in the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a good point. Be, yeah, that's a, well, yeah, but, well that's interesting. Mandalorian takes place what, five years after Jedi? Something like that. Right? So if Kenobi it's taking place between three and four. They could have a younger version of her because some who's playing her in in Mandalorian. It's um. Is he gonna have like a white beard? What I I saw a picture on Instagram where he was growing out his beard. So, right, but he's still young. He's well. Not... It's let's put it this way: the, the the length of time between three and four is got to be like let's just say seventeen years from baby to almost a teen. No, it's to an adult. Uh, so, do you think they, they would go with like try to like if they do tie it in, what would they do? They if she was going to be in Anakin and uh, Kenobi. If they did, they would have to get a younger actress because the one playing her in Mandalorian, um, this girl, she was in Clerks too. Yeah. What was her name again? Rosario Dawson. Yes. So she's playing her. So. If they do, if they did have her in Kenobi or give her her own show, um, apparently she's a very popular character. That would be interesting as well because she's fulcrum in Rebels. So there's the whole thing they can do with her. I mean, really, Disney Plus is just a gateway for so many Star Wars things. They can do so much, you know, um, TV shows and been made for disney plus movies you know which would be pretty cool speaking of star wars uh gentle giant is going to be releasing the one sixth scale bust of the boba fett concept um so originally boba fett was designed by joe johnson and ralph mcquarrie um and the figure well i'm sorry the bust is going to come with two alternate helmets representing the designs of i believe of each it comes packaged in a full colored box with a certificate of authenticity, which is numbered because it's only limited to 500 pieces. Uh, it's going to go for $120, and it does look pretty cool. I think they made also, um, not for this, but didn't they release a uh, Ralph McQuarrie Boba Fett figure years ago? It was like an all white Boba Fett white armor. Oh, I don't remember. I don't, I mean, it sounds familiar, but I'm not sure if it was Gentle Giants. Yeah. If you check out, um, Gentle Giant has a lot of cool uh, Mandalorian stuff as well that's on pre-order right now. A lot of great statues. Um, just a, a reference to my buddy uh, Fen Fen, 
Um, he is a Tom. Do you know who King Diamond is? The rock star. Yeah, yeah, he's a musician. So, uh, my buddy the Fenster is a big, big King Diamond fan. Now, I was a kid. I I knew of King Diamond just because of a guy I went to school with, and I went to a Catholic school. This this singer scared the hell out of me. I was like, I'm staying away from that. Uh, Super Seven is putting out their second King Diamond figure. This is going to be from the classic Merciful Fate era from the 1980s. It's going to be seven inches. It's going to be detailed and painted, and it comes with a bunch of items. Uh, the the doll is going to have a sculpted vest with leather texture and a bullet belt. It's going to have three different heads, um, a classic corpse paint, one with no makeup but with sunglasses, and a debut Merciful Fate makeup, um, which was not shown at the time on Super 7. Uh, it's going to have a black cape, thread lining, and a high collar, cloth rags for his arms and his wrists. It's going to have two pairs of fists, two pairs of gripping hands, two pairs, pairs of expressive hands, um, one right hand throwing the horns, which is kind of like, um, you know, that, that metal thing you do. Um, two necklaces, one being a crucifix, a uh, chain go around the neck, have a goat skull, because why not? Um, a blood-filled skull chalice and a microphone made out of bones. So uh, I know my buddy was... He has the first one, and he's thinking about getting this one. He's going back and forth, and I, I say get it, dude. Um, Who did the first one? Super Seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did. Um, they did that one. They, they, they do a lot of a, uh, a lot of the stuff. But yeah, um, he actually. I, I don't know if I saw it first or, but I know he texted me and he was like, "They're killing me," because he, he's like such a fan. He's like, he, he has to buy. It. He, dude, you got to buy it. Just, just go buy it. Um, so yeah, so he's pretty pretty thrilled and pretty bummed at the same time, you know, that there's something coming out and it's like, do I get it or not? Um, also in the music, music news, um, are you a Misfits fan, Tommy? Uh, I've heard them. Yeah. They're actually, I'm more of a Danzig fan. All right. Well, he was from the Misfits right. he was and a... from Lodi, New Jersey. Um, so their neck, uh, NECA is making the Misfits mascot. Um, it's going to be the Misfits holiday themed dressed as Santa. And this is an eight inch tall figure. This is a sack of presents. This is made out of fabric. It has two sets of hands, two interchangeable heads. This ships in November of 2020. Now, I don't want, just so you know, this is not the Misfits of Science, the show with Courtney Cox, if anybody remembers that. That was uh, before she did Masters of the Universe. But after her Bruce Springsteen video. So just that is a terrible joke. I am bombing on the jokes today, folks. But yeah, so this Misfits toy, if you're a fan of the Misfits, um, definitely this is for you. November comes out. Um, my personal favorite Misfits album is um, the Project 1950, where they do all the covers. Uh, the Monster Mesh is on that. A lot of great oldie songs. Um, that's the one. That's my favorite album of theirs. You and know Guar? Guar. Yeah. Yes, I saw them, not in concert, because they're freaky. I was at Chilla Theater, and they were there, and they walked right by me. And I was like, that was the first time I heard of them. But Guar, um, they have one song I do like, um, The Road Behind, mm. uh, which is like kind of a mellow song, I think, for them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, some of my friends in high school um, were, were they were just big metalheads. And I remember, I remember going to a convention in New York. This was around the same time that Max started on MTV. Okay, they had the MTV booth was right next to the Guar booth. Oh Lord! So I was sitting there or standing there just looking at all the Max stuff, and like the whole band or you know, actors dressed up as the band just surrounded me. Yeah. And, you know, they start touching me and stuff. Now I, I, I don't like to be touched. <laughs> then, then one girl grabbed my butt. First time that's ever happened. And, uh, and yeah, she was like, you like war. 
I was like, I, I, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they're they're wild. They're um, it's not your average type of music, um, but I really do like that one song. Um, no, they're they're pretty good. I, I like the theatrics. That's pretty. Yes, good. they're very theatrical. Um, yeah, yeah, fake blood and fake and blood like and that, yeah. weird outfits, like just giant shit. medieval, yeah, medieval spikes, stuff. On, yeah, a lot of spikes. Um, but yeah, the road behind. Now that's that. That's the heavy metal Scott Schneider should write about. <laughs> uh, Gentle Giant also taught me about being into this kind, of, this idea. Um, pre-order right now, the DC. Bat, uh, Batman the Animated Series. Have you heard about the busts coming out? No. All right, so they have three... Uh, there are 3D busts of the Animated Series Legends. The Joker, Harley Quinn, and Batman from the Animated Series. Uh, Joker's going for 175 It's coming out this year. Uh, Harley Quinn is at 175 She did not have a date on it when it's being released, but I'm guessing it's this month. Uh, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. this year. Batman goes for 200, but he's also 2020. And they look just like the cartoon. Um, I, yeah, so they're on pre order right now. And they're looking just like the cartoon. They have one other one that um, I'm really psyched for. Uh, it's um, pre order, ex- expected to release this year. It's a Rocketeer Legends in 3D dimension, it's a bust of the movie version of the rocketeer so the, the rocket pack is going to have the two thrusters on it and that's going for 150 dollars um that's supposed to be out this summer but it looks it just looks so cool it looks awesome uh so that was from gentle giant okay i'd like to give a thank you to brian salvatore for our intro and outro music shared universe podcast studio join the conversation at toys T O Y S podcast at gmail.com. And you can hear us on the following stations Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Podbeam, Spotify, and we've just joined iHeartRadio. Please subscribe or give us a rating, or please do both. Follow us on social media at on Twitter at Toylines, Instagram at Toylines, Facebook at Toylines, or Toy Shelf Magazine. And remember, the website is toylines with a hyphen dot com. Um, don't forget the hyphen. Um, and I'd like to give a, a thank you. We got some fan mail to a movie Jedi. Thank you very much for, for writing. We appreciate it. Very kind words that you said. Thank you. Um, we do read the mail. Um, so please, folks, if you have anything you'd like to discuss or throw out, you know, a mention of your favorite toy or, you know, love to read it love to hear about it uh everybody stay safe out there make sure you wear your masks um be careful with this heat right now wherever area you are if you're having those heat waves uh and just take it easy it's um a lot of stuff that's scary with this uh thing going around right now so try to stay safe stay home play with your toys we'll take see care. you next week bye